Hi, my name is Richard Lyle. Today, you're going to have a close-up look of a painting I did of the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is a very difficult subject. It can be quite overwhelming for the plain ear artist to go out there and see that vast canyon in front of them. So I'll show you how I tackled it and what process I used to tackle the canyon. And uh, it worked for me. I was pretty happy with the painting. I did it in one sitting. And I, I hope you enjoy it. When I first looked at this beautiful vista, I have to say, I did not think this would be one of those paintings that just fell into place. As I examined the motive, I decided to use the golden rule. I explained the golden rule in my video on composition. If you know the golden rule, you are already thinking, how can this guy see 0.618? I cannot. I cannot multiply something I see by 0.618, but I can see a 60% by 40% divide. This works better than I thought. The lines marking the picture in the video were done on the computer, which can multiply and calculate by 0.618, and my original markings were unbelievably accurate. So let's get going. The first thing I did was mark the center of interest and the horizon line. This line and point is what your whole painting involves around. Here I have marked the drawing with the horizon line and the point of interest as I did with the start of my thumbnail drawing and the transfer. Picking up my canvas, I like to try to divide my painting up first with vertical lines. I seldom paint these vertical lines on my canvas. I normally find something on my subject that I can use as a line or a marking. So when I divided the space on the right side of the points of interest of this painting, I found that the red cliff fell right on the 4060 divide. Here you can see how I marked the line. Don't worry, if your line is not perfect, it's easy to adjust later. The 6040 vertical line did not line up with any vertical lines in my motive but it passed right through a large bush in the lower right corner. As I look closer at this bush, I realize that the lower horizontal 60-30 line also passed right along the top of the bush. With two lines crossing at that location, I knew it would be safe to draw in the whole outline of the bush. Whenever you have two lines crossing on an object in your subject, it is very safe that you will be very accurate in placing it on the canvas. With the 60-40 vertical on the left side of the center of interest, there was also no vertical lines in the subject. But the line passed right through the center of a small bush. Because of the size of the bush and how close it was to the bottom edge of the canvas, I knew I could draw in the outline of the whole bush. The 4060 vertical line also did not line up with any vertical lines in my motive, but a faraway cliff crossed it halfway between the horizon line and the horizontal point of interest line. Because the cliff is between those two lines, I felt comfortable drawing it in. The 6040 horizon line passed right along the top front edge of the plateau. Also, the 
vertical line of the center of interest pass through the edge of the plateau at about one third point. This made it possible to draw in the whole end of that plateau. Now I have enough lines and points marked so I can start to draw in all the lines and so I can start it by drawing in the outline of the front ledge. Then I drew in the outline of the plateau. I then completed the lines for the cliffs on the right. And after that, I drew in all the remaining lines for the lower canyon. I put in just a few more lines, which would help me block in all the big shapes with my underpainting. Here you can see how my transfer lines would look on my canvas. Note, all the lines would be the same color. Now I would fill in each section with color. First the underpainting colors, which were reverse colors, i.e. the blue sky would be orange. Then I would block in each section with in local color. After that, I would keep modeling the paint until the painting was complete. Here is the painting with the lines again. And here is the painting again without the lines. The completed painting as it looks today. Now, let's look up close at the painting and see how it looks. First, let's look at this blow up of just the center of interest. You can see how I made it jump out with the cool faraway mountains behind it. Also see how the lines of those faraway mountains are very soft compared to the ledges in the mid and foreground. The next close up is a big bush in the lower right foreground. You can see how warm the shadow is at the base of the bush and how the cliff is peeking through. In this next blow up of the lower corner of the painting, you can see how warm I have the shadows of the cracks in the ledge. This is one place where your eye almost sees different than a camera. The camera will always have these shadows dark and colder. The shadows do get cooler as they move away from the source. You can see that shadow from the big bush on the right does get cooler and lighter as it moves further away from the bush. Here, in this blow up, you can see how warm the closer red cliff is. Often a camera will show these shadows cooler than your eye sees them. Also see how I use these large brush strokes to paint the cliff. This last close up of the sky, you can see how my orange underpaint is bleeding through the blue. This makes the painting more vibrant. I hope you enjoy the painting and the video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. And thank you. Have a good time painting. Bye.